first with Ashley and Dawn, book club buddies who love to read YA fiction. We'll discuss the good, the bad, the ugly, and oh my gosh, we need to talk about this right now. I'm Ashley, the fantasy architect. And I'm Dawn, the criticizer of books. So grab something sweet or salty and join our universe. All right, and welcome to the spoiler-free and then spoiler edition of Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I, Dawn, got the pleasure of getting an early copy. Don't know, well, I do know how that happened. The publisher was, <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know how that happened because I'm never on anybody's list. But the publisher, like, sent out an email, was like, hey, if you want to read this book, let me know. I was like, hell yeah. Well, yeah. And then um, <laughs> some random box came for me in the mail. I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh. So, I read it in a week. It's 800 pages. Ashley, how long did it take you to read? <laughs> it took me three days. Three days. <laughs> oh, my God. And I read every single word. Let me state that. I think I read 95%. I read every single word because I was like... Especially big... the end. I read, I read it really slowly because I really wanted to make I sure did. I understood everything. I, like, reread, like, the last, like, three chapters because I was like... What? Let me make sure yeah. I got it because there's a lot that happened yeah. in the ending of the book, which was like the last 400 pages. 400 pages. I'm not even joking. Oh my God. It's so true. It like, four, I would say 100, uh, 150 is yeah. when all the shit goes down. Mm, no. Is it? I think it might literally be. I'm going to check. The thing with Micah, not Micah, what's his no. name? What's his name? Hunter? Hunter. No, with with Hunt and Bryce, those are the yeah the big the big hit fan shitter thing that happened. Oh no, that was like when um, with Danica. Yeah, that's when all of that. Yeah, well, I guess that's that's when I can. I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. All right. So for this <laughs> the spoiler free edition, we are going to talk about the things that we did like or what we didn't like first. And then we'll end on a positive note and talk about what we did like. And then we will roll right on to through to the spoiler edition. And you can turn it off at that point. And after you've read it, then you can come back and listen to the end of the podcast. I will put the timestamp when we start the spoiler edition in the show notes. Okay. What did you not like? Oh, man. Okay. So, which is, this is a really big, like, admittance for me. Because Moss is one of my favorite authors. Like, I have every one of her books. In hardback and on the e but like, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So I went into this book, like, not knowing what to expect because TOG and Akotar, like, it's, they are very specific worlds. And so going into a whole new world, I was pretty upset that I did not have the access to a map and, like, everyone's different houses mm-hmm. yet again. And I was <laughs> like, crap, like, I wish I would have paid attention um, especially when they go through all the different lords and then there's oh, yeah. the archangels and like this whole big thing. It's a big world, guys. It's it is huge. a huge world. And so the first, I just looked it up, the first 90 pages, I was like, why is this so predictable? Something bad is going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. Well, let's not talk about that. What didn't you want? <laughs> Because <laughs> that's huge. So no. what did you, so what else did you not like? We'll I get into did that. not enjoy and I'm not, I don't know why I want to say it, but I I just, there was so much of Hunt and Bryce yeah. for like 200 pages. Oh, there, like 800 pages. Okay. We talk I about. understand. But like for me, 200 pages, it was just like, you're instantly thrown into this love cycle. Okay. And like, they're placed into a situation together where of course you are like, okay, they're going to fall in love. Like you're already like aware yeah. this is going to happen. You're like, of course. Okay. But then it just keeps going and going, and the tension is still riding at about, like, 70% for 200 pages. And you're Mm -hmm. like, is something ever going to happen? You don't know. Because there's just so much going on. But there is a bigger reveal, and they're like, I understand, I get it. And they're both rejects from their groups, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. So you're just, like, they're just plotted together. That was one of my biggest gripes is that in, well, Akotar only read the first two books, so I think it's kind of similar as far as what I'm about to say. But in TOG, we follow different couples. So when you get tired of Selena and Rowan, then you get to learn about 
Elide and Lorcan, or then we get to see Lysandra and Aiden, even though I hated that couple, but it doesn't matter. I get a break. But <laughs> this book, it was 800 pages of Bryce and Hunter, and I was over it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what about, what was the name? Rylan? Ruin. Ruin. So, Ruin and- is her brother, which he is a mysterious character. Yeah, he was a really good character. And I really wanted to know more, more about him. And her friends that she talks about with the wolf pack and whatever. Like, yeah. there's just so many different avenues because there is so many different houses and territories that you could literally just jump to somebody else's point of view. Yeah. And I think because through the Throne of Glass series, I mean, you literally are on, like, Selena's journey into Dorian, and it's, like, her and Dorian the first book with Kale, and, like, then it switches, and then there's all these other additives of characters, which I think is what hopefully she'll do. Because then she started so. to, towards the end, it was like, oh, now I'm seeing through other people's point of views. But she didn't state it. No. So it's, I don't I don't know, guys. Like, It was just too much of them. Um, and it's written in third person. So it wasn't like it was first person Bryce POV. No. It's yeah. third person. She could have jumped to other characters. Mm-hmm. It was just too much of them. And like you said, it's like... Hello, are they, aren't they, are they, aren't they? And I need for I need. 200 pages. Don says it's 400, but for me, I was like, y'all gonna, y'all gonna get together or not? Huh? No? Okay. It's another one of those, like, I'm not gonna show you my feelings type of thing. Yeah. And even though it's just and happening. Maybe I'll save that for the spoiler, but <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was my first issue. I wrote too much Hunter and Bryce. Hunt, whatever his name is. Yeah. Um, I, another thing I didn't like is I felt like, so it's a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. Um, and they kind of have to work together to solve this murder. And it kind of felt like an episode of CSI Miami where it was like, um, (laughs) we're just watching them solve a case and then they get a lead and we watch them go this lead and then they get a little tidbit and then they They get beat up and then they go back again. And that leads a dud and they get a new lead and it's like, okay, like I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this murder mystery guys. Let's Mm -hmm. solve this and move on with our lives. I, that got on my nerves. For me, that was like 400 pages of Oh, that. yeah. And I was like... That happens okay, all the way to the end are climax. Are they ever going to figure out this murder and mystery? And then it's like, oh, no, this is what happened to this person. And no, 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 this is what happens. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. But I feel, I feel like we could have done without like maybe 300 pages of that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, because I'm paying a lot of t- attention to detail... There was a reason as to why each of those different points. So we can meet new characters? No, it added towards the end of the story. Oh, well, yeah, but... And because I was getting annoyed, I missed, like, part of the big reveals because I was getting annoyed. I was like, oh, I just want to be done. I don't want to read this crime scene anymore. Like, what else is there? (sighs) That's why we have detectives. (laughs) I, yeah, <laughs> because they can handle it. Well, I mean, that's what like, Hunter oh. was. He was he was Popo, but was he though? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Anyway, <laughs> um, I mean, through their travels, we did get to meet some interesting characters. What was the girl from Viper City? Did I just make that up? No, it is a Viper Queen. Viper Queen. It I like the Viper, Viper Queen. Queen. She is like I like super the Mer Man. What was his name? The Mer Guy. A terror. I don't need to know his name, but he's a Mer, right? He is a Mer. I liked him. But there was, like, so Bryce in a person, like, I really, I really did enjoy her character development because there was a lot of her in in Hunt, like, there, Mm -hmm. and there's a reason why. So I'm almost like, okay, is the next book going to be more of on everyone else's character development? Because she has some interesting developments in the story. I think we're going to see more of, what's his name, Ruin? Ruin. Ruin? We're going to wait because it's spelled weird. We're gonna see R-U-H-N. more of him. <laughs> Who else? Um, and Fury. The hell's that? No, no, oh no! Oh, she this is, is the a friend. Sprite. No, Fury. No, no, no Fury, Fury was, her was not a Sprite. Fury was. I the, liked her too. The assassin. Who the? Where the? I, yeah, I and she her. just comes in with her airplane, and you're like, what the? F-? She's got an airplane. She just. <laughs> She's like a badass. She like, really is. Can we get more of this? And her name is Fury. Mm-hmm. What was she though? I she was some undercover assassin. She was almost like like a bounty. Like she was yeah, like but going what like what kind a bounty of hunter. monster is she? I think she was normal. Was she human? No, she's not human. Not doing like, all the stuff she was doing. 
I don't remember mm. what she was. She might have been an elf of a form, something. Okay. She was not. I don't know. I don't remember. But was she Faye? I, that's what I'm like. Was she elf? <laughs> I was like, there were elves. I don't remember any elves. Oh my gosh, Faye. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, I wanted more of her because she is like this underlying character, and you're like, yeah, she was pretty good. She was yeah. good. And Bryce's employer. I wanted yeah, more of she that was, woman. She was always she was always talking to her through screens. Yeah, like she was never. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. but she could never like respond to her either, which was weird. Yeah, she's got a backstory too that we don't really. She like left her coven. Was she a witch? Mm-hmm. She left her coven for, yep. and we don't know why. We so. don't know why. Jezebaya or Bea. Um. Another thing I didn't Just like what? about this book, so I'm kind of comparing it to Lee Bardugo, who jumped from YA to adult fantasy, and I'm also comparing it to like I don't know if you read any. You have I don't know if you read any teen books by V. Schwab, Victoria mm-hmm, Schwab. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she writes teen and she writes adult, and then Jay Kristoff, and you can tell a big difference from their teen and their adult. But I felt like this book did not need to be adult. I felt like it could have been teen. I mean, there were some sexy times that I felt like. There was way more sexy times in Throwing a Glass than in this book. But see, like, their sexy times was just, like, I just feel like they were just swearing more, if that yeah. makes any oh, sense. Yeah, it was a lot more swearing. There was just but a lot take more that swearing, out. and it's like, that doesn't make this adult, in my opinion. No, it doesn't. But, um, it wasn't like you... the themes were hard to, or it wasn't challenging. I mean, it yeah. was a lot of information, but you can mm-hmm. pick up a pen and write that down. It wasn't, mm-hmm. like, I felt like... Ninth House was like really challenging as far as character development. Like, yep. it, but this Bryce was not a deep character at all, or Hunter, or any of them. Well, I mean, you do learn more about Bryce that she has under wraps. Like, but that. I think Selena was a much deeper character a- than her. Yeah. And I know Selena expanded over eight books. Well, yeah. But I mean, and then she became alien and her yeah. herself. So, but I mean, you know, this is not eight books, and this is just no. her start. But even the first, even Throne of Glass, like okay, so if you think of it as page number, mm-hmm. like if you put Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and half of oh no, Air of Fire, it's it equals this size, literally the size. And she of this book. she grew a lot in those first three books. Mm-hmm. This girl, I mean, she grows, but I don't know. I felt like Selena was a much better character study than I her. think so because I mean. There was just a lot more in depth that we didn't know about the Queen of Wildfire, if you will. Like we just we didn't know her whole entire story. Why was she abandoned? Blah 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 blah. blah. Like why was she almost left for dead? Why is she an assassin? Like all of these things. Yeah. And Bryce is like a half a half human. It is stated. Yeah. In the book. So there were things that did happen, which I think like were more redemptive parts, but at the same time. I don't know why it had to be 800 pages. I don't either. It didn't really. I, I feel like it could have been like maybe 500. Mm-hmm. And just save. And like that would have been a way more better story driven book. I agree. Like, And the character development would have moved a lot faster. Oh, yeah. Because you would have cut out the crap in the middle. The CSI crap. If it's, you a, it's a lot. It's a lot of crap. Um, Shadow, because I thought that this book was bigger than Kingdom of Sha- Kingdom of Ash, Kingdom of Shadow. That's Queen not a book. Queen of Shadows <laughs> is a book. But it's not. Kingdom of Ash is 900 pages. However, we're following eight different couples. She's yep. got to wrap up everybody's story. Mm-hmm. And so that's why. And it didn't even feel like 900 pages. Mm-hmm. This felt every bit. It did. Page. <laughs> it did. And I like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I have a problem saying bad things about her, but I was like. I can't be biased in the situation. Like, I totally feel for you. Like, it was way too long. However, it is a very fast oh, read. Oh, very quick. Very fast read. And I'm talking, like, I read all all the words on the pages. Yeah. For me to get through an 800-page book in a week is mm-hmm. a feat. Well, that and don't it's like, with me. when I think back to, like, Kingdom of Ash and how long it took me to get through that book, like, it took me five days. Yeah, I think it took me about a week to get through that, too. But I was excited. I was like, ooh! I get to yes. read about this I wouldn't say I was excited I was just trying to get through it because I know you were reading it then Elise then Alyssa I knew there were people behind me waiting yeah. to read it so I wanted to get through it for you guys but I was excited to read Kingdom I was I, I, this I, book oh I didn't know what to expect I think that was my hardest thing is because like I'm I follow all of her blog pages and, and whatever and I was like okay I'm really excited and then when you open the book it's just it's a whole new world and I think it was just yeah 
I don't know. Like, I feel like there was just too much. But, but, I really hope that the next book has different POVs because then the book would be way more entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I don't like having different POVs because, like, for me, then it's, like, jumping all over the place. But it is good. I understand why they're needed. But there are some moments where I was like, I just want to read about this character. I don't care about everyone else's. And in this one, when you're like, oh, yeah, I wish there was different POVs. And I was like, what do you wish you were talking about? And then I'm like, oh. Because there's too much of two people. Mm -hmm. And not enough of everyone else where it's like everyone else's story was so huge. And that's what you were waiting for. So. Was there anything else you didn't like about it? That's all I had. (sighs) Yeah. No, I think it was just the matter of there was too much Hunt and Bryce. And I really wish there was different BOVs because they could have been way better. So with me, uh, Crescent City was a whole new world. It is with Archangels, which I find to be very exciting. Um, there were a bunch of these Archangels that basically are heads over like territories and... Then there's, like, the bigger, greater people that kind of just come in and they're, like, the shoguns. Like, they can just decimate a whole entire civilization if they really wanted to. Um, You learn about the different levels of hell. There is, you find that there's, like, different circles, which that was very interesting because that goes into, like, Dante's. Yeah. Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno. Um, And so there's a lot of symbolism there. Um, And I felt like the last... 400 pages of this book was really when the story came alive. It wasn't so much this whole romance thing because I can't believe I'm talking bad like this, but I am. (laughs) But Sarah Moss's romance between her characters are, for me, it's always something that I'm like, oh, I want to read the next page and I want to see like how their growth is and whatever. And like, are they going to fall in love? Well, yeah, you know, they're going to fall in love, but like, how does their story actually get them to that point? Um, but the last 400 pages, I just felt like, oh, this... I almost feel like it should have been reversed. The order of the book should have been reversed because of what happened in the first, like, 100 pages. I was like, oh, this is, like, super predictable. I don't understand what's happening. Like, why? Why? And then I was like, oh, there we go. There it is. Okay. Um, but I really enjoyed Bryce as a character because Bryce is a woman with a hidden agenda, who doesn't want to have a hidden agenda, but she chooses to have a hidden agenda just to save face for her brother. Yeah. Well, we Which, don't learn that until, like, the end. That's what I'm saying. The last four hundred pages, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really enjoyed that. Like, I enjoyed the banter between Bryce and her brother, Ruin, and, like, yeah, that that was huge. And then you learn about Hunt, and, like, he is just like this starstruck man who has been in love with this woman that has died, mind you. She's been dead for decades. It might be. We'll save that for the spoiler. <laughs> I forgot we Like, really into, like, you can say, like, his, but, like, really his whole jam, save it for the... Yeah, anyway. So he's, remember. like, still starstruck over someone, and he just cannot seem to get over this person. And it just shows his growth and his development with having to find new love again. And what that actually looks like. Yeah. And what would he do if he was actually free? Because he's a slave. Yeah. I couldn't, I didn't quite understand all of that. I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> so there was, there was a rebellion. Okay. There was a rebellion. I, I remember the rebellion mm-hmm. and then they got caught for rebelling. And then, but there was another, there were another group of people that were slaves too, that had something on their wrist. Yeah. He had it on his brow. His brow was and the some reminder. Of the fact that he was part... Yeah, so there's the actual slave mark that's on their arm. But his brow was because he was, like, sentenced to always being, like, with an archangel, like, under their power and command because he had rebelled. Big time. But I don't... I don't... How did he... How did all the other people become slaves? Mm, I can't remember. I I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, I really enjoyed, I guess, like, there was a lot of different territories to look into. And, like, everyone's territory was, like, super duper unique, which I really enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I liked all the monsters and the different types of monsters. And they all kind of lived together. Mm -hmm. I won't say in harmony, but... (laughs) 
Kinda, kinda, sorta. They all were just living mm -hmm. werewolves and not werewolves. They're just wolves. They weren't werewolves. No, they're just regular wolves. Wolves that turned into humans, but they yeah. weren't werewolves. Mm -hmm. And um, what was the Viper Queen? She was a snake. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and Billy. And um, <laughs> um, angels and demons and sprites and mermaids. And so I did like, just she like incorporated all those different mythical beasts in one world. Yeah. I put that it moved really quickly. Um, I didn't skim a lot. I know that's probably not something to brag about. <laughs> but There are some books you can skim relatively easy. Yeah. Because um, it is a lot of info dumping. This, I didn't feel like there was a lot of info dumping. I put there was massive info dumping. Really? I put the word massive in all caps. I don't <laughs> quite know what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to, but I did put that. <laughs> See, and I did not think that there was massive info dumping. There was a lot Apart of Apart from the CSI crime scene But there was thing. a lot of explaining about the angel slave thing, and then the explaining about the... And we forgot it. Because <laughs> she explained. She did a lot of telling and all of showing. I did feel like there was a lot of explaining. She had to explain constantly yes. about her world. So I call that info dumping because she. But I, I, I've come to learn that that's what that's how she tells her story, and I'm not mad at it. It's fine. Her, it's her worlds are big. She has to get it in there somehow. Do we know the backstory what she as said. to like where? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because I had to put it in there. Yeah. Um, do we know the backstory of how she came to write this story? I don't know. I almost want to look it up because I feel like there is no way that this was just randomly in the works somewhere. I feel like this could have been like a first of a first, if that makes sense. Like, no. I feel like she was writing this while writing Throne of Glass. Maybe. Because... That was something that was really big on, like, her growth as an author. Throne of Glass, you could definitely tell she was a new author writing a book. Mm -hmm. But it still moved really well. And it's, like, there were some issues with this, with this book where I just felt like she was, like, a new author again in the first oh, 400 gosh. pages. As I, I'm dead serious, though. Like, I, 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 I hate agree. saying it. I agree. But I feel like I had that same, like, sense that I did when I was reading Throne of Glass for the first time, even though I was really excited about the story because it moved super duper quickly and there was all these different things. And I was like, I didn't understand the big love story. And I know I keep coming back to that, but I was like, why? Why is this in our face right now? I feel like Hunt's love story mirrored Lorcan. And I was like, I read this already. Yeah. And but Lorcan was unrequited. Exactly. Because Maeve was awful, but it it was close. Yeah. Exactly. He couldn't love another woman because he was pining for this yeah. for Maeve. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. That's I, all I liked about this book. I did really <laughs> like the way that it wrapped up because that was where everything came to to life though. Mm -hmm. Just there's keep going. There, one, is, there is hope. <laughs> there is one moment in the book that I really, really liked. I'm not going to say because it, it is a spoiler, but it's towards the end, and we'll talk about that in spoiler edition. Yeah, because I feel like I can't say anymore else. I'm going to spoil yeah. everything. Yeah, we can't really say too much. It's an enjoyable read. It it moves. There's monsters. I, if you read Kingdom of Ash, you, you saw this world briefly in Kingdom of Ash. Yeah. Um, you didn't know it. I went back and read the mm -hmm. part in Kingdom of Ash where... Aelin is like going through different dimensions and she sees She's it flying through Three. all the different yeah it's like two words yep but it's there so that was cool mm -hmm. at least she could die in that way I almost felt very similar to like Lanny Taylor's of Gods and Monsters oh I didn't read that one girl I, girl, I couldn't get I, I saw the thickness of that book <laughs> it was like nope so I stopped that book too okay well I could relate a lot of what was happening to that just with the different types of monsters because okay. but she's also like Lanny Taylor's like number one fan mosses. Well duh, Lanny Taylor's great. Yeah. She's she's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Are you right. ready for some spoilers? Alright, so that is the spoiler free edition of Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. It is is this Wait, so is Crescent City the name of the series, and it this is, book one is House of Earth and Blood? It or is it the other House way around? House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City. No. 
Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood. Because that is important because there are the different houses. Um, yeah, so this is Crescent City Book One. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the series is called Crescent City. It comes out March 1st, March 3rd. 3rd. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you are a Sarah J. Mass fan, oh, this is going to be huge. Everyone's going to be reading it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to think what everyone else thinks because. They're going to love it. If they love the Kotar, they're going to love this. I didn't like a Kotar. Sorry. I know you did. Okay. No, because uh, I'm not going to put my like little two cents in there because <laughs> I can go on for hours. But. <laughs> All right. So we are starting the spoiler <laughs> edition of Crescent City in five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, All right. Spoilers. Time. I would just like to say that there was no booty time in this book. There and I was, was very upset. No it was booty not. Time. It was no booty I'm like. They, I, I am they here. could not get it on. I so when many I, moments. I'm like, this is an adult book. This is Sarah J. Mass. I'm gonna see some booty, and I didn't see anything else. Nothing. Very pissed. Nothing. We I learned was, about the jelly though. Pissed. Little jelly, <laughs> like pony things. All we got was some <laughs> finger banging. I was oh my pissed. Gosh. You have no idea how upset I was. Um. I'm like, I'm on page I was 300 the same and I seen no booty time. I'm like, why are we building up to this? There is no That's what she's it. known for. I she's know. known for her great booty time. And I know. Any of it. I need a little bit of erotica in my life, okay? Like, if there was no erotica, Sarah Moss, come on. I was very upset about that. I was. I really, I'm like, come on. Hunch is this waiting. steamy guy. I'm waiting. And that's, this is why I was super upset about how long this book took, I think, is because I was waiting for the booty time. I was. And they did not bang it out once. Not, not once. Not once. And then, like, she's pissed at him towards <sighs> the end. And I'm like, okay, there's 50 pages left. When is the booty time? Well, and now no they're upset time. with each other. Yep. And then he's like, oh, I'll see you at home. That's it. What is this? Rizan all over again? Or Rizan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, His yeah. Name that was the first thing that <sighs> was upsetting. Oh, my gosh. I know. Let's talk about Danica and how she killed her ass off. I didn't see that coming. Uh-huh. I was shocked. I was so pissed. I was ready for Danica. I was like, yeah, she is great. She and then, was amazing. What? So Danica was the, the head of the wolf pack. Like she was going to be promoted to the yeah. prime is what she was called. And this girl gets killed, like massacred. Yeah. Massacred, ripped to shreds. At what point did she die? Oh, at page 90 is when <sighs> it like, she sees her ship sail, which is where like, they go to, like, bury their, their dead, and they have to cross over, and, like, if they had an honorable death, and blah, 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 or whatnot, and anyway, I was really upset, because I really enjoyed Connor, mm-hmm. okay, like, he was one of the wolves, and it's like, okay, like, really, we're into this already, like, Bryce is this super druggy chick that's just like, I don't care that I am half human, half fae, like, nothing is gonna happen for me, I'm just stuck in this, and... Why does Danica become her friend? Like, you have all of these issues as to, like, why is this wolf pack just at her apartment? They're just hanging out, having a gay old time. And then they all die. They all die. I thought it was fake. I was like, this didn't, this didn't really happen. I thought it was a ruse. Like, someone, like, yeah. set up, like, just a bunch of, like, shredded meat everywhere. Yeah. Which, mind you, that's exactly how it's described. Is that yeah, they're yeah. shredded all over the place. And then you see Bryce just literally just becomes overcome by the drugs or terror, or whatever, she just somehow becomes amazing and just, like, runs over all of these people. Well, part of it is because she's, like, her her father trained her to be, like, awesome. And but not her fast. real father. No, her, her stepfather, father. like, because she can, like, run for distances, apparently. Exactly. And, and do, make like, a weapon over and, anything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> over hurdles. She just jumps over hurdles. She's just, she's just like, scaling walls. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. She's bleeding, but she don't care. She's still going. Maybe makes a makeshift, you know, sling and whatnot. And she saves this angel guy. Which I was shocked which, that was Micah. Yeah. That it, blew me away. I literally. was like, whoa. Uh-huh. And no one said anything about this human woman who's half fate that just saved his ass. Literally. And the monster didn't even look at her like she was anything worthwhile. Just went on. Because it wasn't she, after her, right? No, because she was the horn. She has the oh, horn. Oh, yeah, the horn. She was the horn. I don't know how I didn't see that coming. I, I didn't e- I knew it was something important with the tattoo. I was like, she's hidden something in her. Some sort of device to find something. But I did not know that the ink that was used to tattoo her mm-hmm. was the horn. 
like shred it. That was genius. Yeah, that was also genius. Put her friend in danger too. Like and didn't tell her anything, anything. And I was looking for that damn sword. Danica's sword. Oh, I knew she had it because every time her mom, like Sabine, every time she yes. was like, "Where's my sword?" she would like totally change the subject. Oh, like she totally got that shit. I know. But I'm like, so I'm like, where is the fucking sword? Like we don't know where the sword is because it says that it was hidden in the closet. And I'm a detail person, so I'm like, okay, where's the sword? Where'd she move it to? She just just left it there. And I'm like, is just Bea gonna find it again? Like who's gonna find the sword? I was so mad because I was like, just get the damn sword. Where's the sword at? Well, let's wow. talk about the sword. I don't know. Oh we're just goodness. like jumping around. Anyway. I know. Because this is what we mean about like, you got to come and just hang out with us because this is where our brains are. Um, that scene where she is in the museum or the gallery and Micah's coming after her and she runs to that office, gets that sword, fucking slays and slays she him. She slays him Burns so his shit up and tossed him in the garbage. I was like, yes! Uh-huh. That was amazing. And she vacuumed his passion. up. And oh my god. It was just like, I read it like three times. Uh-huh. Because she had it was to. amazing. I was like, she is a beast. And they're all watching it. And they're just uh-huh. like, uh-huh. oh my god. And yeah. Just <laughs> up like it wasn't nothing. That was great. <laughs> yeah, so she gets injected great. with this serum, mind you. This is like that's literally what Danica died from is because she was injected with the serum. Um, that basically makes people go crazy. It's like a super big adrenaline rush and they just want more and more and more and people with power end up killing themselves because they just can't yeah. contain this desire or this need. And it's like, you just see the seconds ticking down in this scene with her and Micah because Micah's like, you're not going to tell anybody that you actually saved my ass, like blah, 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 blah. And then she just kills him. <laughs> and it's this bloody, magnificent she like massacre. She like jumps through a window. I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I know where it was. She jumps through a window. Does she like shoot him or something? So she, okay, so they're in the bottom she of She shoots Jesbia's him in the head. Leg. Oh, yeah. She clocks him in the skull, comes down, and just takes his head off. Then she slices all the way down his body and just chops him up into a million pieces, sets him on fire, and then vacuums his butt up. Mind you, she just witnessed, like, the death of the sprite, her love, oh, and, like, like this sprite. Tamira that she's, like, in love with. And there's this, that beast that's in the tank. Can we just talk about We know. never learned what that beast was I in the tank. I couldn't picture that at all. I was really confused by that. I saw it as, like, some weird, like, Leviathan dragon thing. Oh, well, let's talk about, like, she's, like, the chosen one. Or not the she's chosen the one. Star she's the starborn. Yeah. So, she's got superpowers. I mean, like, her power is really, she, does she, like, absorb the light or something? Her power is literal light. It's light. And it's, like, this blinding white light, yeah. which, like, symbolizes, like, the true starborn and blah, blah, blah air. Um, but Ruin's supposed to have this starborn quality, and he literally is only able to, like, conjure this, like, flick of power of light into his hands. And he has to, like, super concentrate on it. And... The who the the king Athler's not Athler. Um, what is Ruin's dad's title? The king of something. He's a lord of something. He's he? the lord of mm, the lord of autumn. The okay. autumn king or whatever yeah. it is. Um. So he's like, why aren't you? Why don't you have this amazing power? And you're gonna be the chosen one. And like this oracle, mind you, has told Rune that he, oh, yeah, the oracle, the bloodline is going to die with him. I love an oracle. I do too. I love <laughs> a good oracle. Um, and you don't know why, but yet when Bryce goes in to be read by the oracle, there's just a screaming. And Oracle, like, loses her mind. She goes blind. She goes blind, and she can't, like, talk to her. And it's like, what does this even mean? And then you learn it's because she's the starborn heir. So it's, like, hidden from everyone that Mm -hmm. that this is who Bryce is. Mind you, her power is not significant by any means, like, in weight of muscle, if you will. She literally can bear light, and... When she makes the drop, which is where she finally settles into her mm-hmm. immortal self, which could be for 100 years, it could be 500 years or whatever. It just depends on, like, what level of power she surpasses when she does the drop. 
Which is basically where she has to die. Yeah. And then someone has to tether her back to life on the other end mm-hmm. to be able to make this this drop jump. But if she doesn't make it, then she just stays dead. And she surpasses, like, everyone's level of power as yeah. she's going down deep in because she calls on that wishing well's, like, button thing. Mm-hmm. So they all go up to this button. Everyone, like, just puts a dab of their power, which you miss that in the first part. You're like, why is it so significant that everyone's making a wish over here? Okay. Yeah. And they're all just like, and they have to sacrifice a part of their power, like, into it. So when she calls for everyone's aid to aid her as a starboard heir, she, like, gathers all of their power. And so she's able to make this drop and exceed everyone's level up to the Autumn Kings, which is the highest level of this okay. Lord state before the Archangels and whatever. I thought she surpassed the Autumn King. By like one percent or whatever it okay. was, like she like barely surpassed him. Okay. So and she ends up making it back, but the only way she makes it back though is because Danica then gives up her honorable death to forever be faded into nothing, which is crazy. It is crazy. All this happens in the last two hundred pages of the book. Literally, it's a lot. You think it's done, and then there's more and, and more, like, oh, and, and it was like more. oh. That's why we just spent all this time. And that's what, like, we couldn't say before because it's, like, it all, for me, that's why I gave it the star rating that I did is because it made it, it made up for it, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Because then there's, like, oh, there it is. But it was so reversed to, like, how she usually tells stories that I was, like, what is going on? I just, I I felt like there wasn't... As much of a lead up to like how amazing it was, I agree. It it a lot hit the fan, very and you fast. Really had to pay attention, and I should have known that because in Throne of Glass, there's like stuff that happens in Throne of Glass that comes back in Queen of Shadows, and they're like, or not Queen of Shadows, the one after Emperor Storms, and you're like, wait, what? Who's what? What? What's, what's this marsh? What's happening? <laughs> Oh, that was in book one? Oh, okay. sorry. What's a word key? What yeah, is that? Exactly, exactly. Wait, wait, wait. And who's who's that? Who's what? Elena? And, and then... Wait, Elaine, uh, Aileen's <laughs> the same person as Selena? What? I don't yeah. understand. Oh, wait, Queen Meep? What? She's... <laughs> yeah. She's Queen of the Valk? What? Like, <laughs> all of these things. She's, her books are super detailed, and I should have been paying more attention to all of that stuff. I should have known better. I guess I was just thrown for a loop because of the involvement with Hutton Bryce, and that was my main issue. Because there was no booty time, yeah. and there was way too much of them. Like? To be okay. Oh, there she is with her shirt and no Again. underwear. I'm like, And can we just talk about that shower scene? Okay. Where when he comes, comes back in. From killing whatever. From killing. And he's just like over it. Like, mind you, he's like the shadow of death. So, like, that's his role is he, like, delivers out Micah's dirty business. You know, mm-hmm. go take care of so-and-so. Oh, and don't use your, your, your gun. You're going to use your hands. Like, it makes it super emotional for him, which is part of his slave enslavement to mm-hmm. him. It's like that's how he pays for it. Um, but when he comes in and he's just so numb, and I'm like, there was such a parallel between like Hunt and like Rezan's like need to protect, but not being seen as this monster. And like, I'm not really a monster. I'm really doing this because I have to. And, like, all of this. And, like, that was such a beautiful moment. And then there was still no booty time. Well, he was upset. Like he I was... understand. But there was no booty time. There was no booty time after that. That whole scene in itself, I was like, and I can be okay with what's happening right now. Like, that's where I was like, all right. They could have okay. made sweet love because he was really upset about it. No, but not even then. Like, I'm talking about, like, that's what could have led oh, up to it, okay, like, later. that was the moment where... That, like, that like, moment I was like... Oh. Where she took care of him and he understood and everything. Yeah. 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 Because that showed, like, Bryce's humanity. Mm-hmm. It shows that she still had a human heart, that she was still able to love even the most broken things. Like, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I still was like, and they still can't do anything. Nothing. That the second book better have all of it. And we're gonna have to wait another two years before it comes out. Well, she out. writes pretty quickly though. 
I really hope it's really quick. She usually bangs it out, like, and she was banging out, <laughs> no like, pun intended. no pun intended. She didn't bang out nothing in here. <laughs> no, but she was banging out, like, a coal tar and throwing mm-hmm. a glass at the same time. And those are huge books. So I think. Between spring and fall. Yeah. You didn't Does notice. she have a ghostwriter? Does somebody help her with these books? I don't know. I think I heard that somewhere. Did I hear that somewhere? I don't know. I've never heard that in my life. Oh, okay, maybe not. Who has a ghostwriter? Now I'm curious. It's like James Patterson. He don't write all them damn books. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's always another author's name underneath his. Oh, there's never one under hers. Yeah, yeah. that's no. Okay, don't do that to me, boss. I will be very upset. She emailing writes you personally. really quickly. Then I think she does. I really well, do. she definitely does. That's why. I'm, that, that's why I was curious what her backstory was with with this book. So I'd be curious to know after it drops because then that way, that's when you get all the information mm-hmm. with it. But. Can I just say I really enjoyed where the Autumn King's ex-lady, who was Bryce's mom, calls him up and was like, told ya. (laughs) When were you going to believe me? That's why I left your ass like over here. (laughs) It was great. Did he like feel bad that he like kicked her to the curb? I don't remember. Well, yeah, because she's like the chosen one. Yeah. Even though... She didn't have any power to start with. Now she has all of this crazy power mm-hmm. that was gifted to her. Which I did enjoy. The So the old Prime, who was Danica's grandfather, not Sabine. Mm-hmm. I loved the part where he was like only a true bearer of like courage or a true wolf is able to save the city. Because the wolves were like... The city's police officers is the best way to put it. And I really enjoyed that relation to Danica's past, like, little, uh, how would you say that? I don't know. (sighs) Her left heir or something like that. Like, she left her line with Bryce, even though Bryce had didn't know that that was going to happen. You think I read this book years ago? I'm like, done. Come on, girl. I'm sorry. I I'm forgot. pulling all this stuff. You're like, what? I don't remember any of that. What, Ashley? And what? I took note. Well, I had tabs. I had tabs. Where are your tabs? tabs? I took them out it's for you, uh, but I didn't like document anything because I'm a lazy ass. Uh, oh my goodness. I had hella yeah. tabs too, and I didn't document. Anything. I had hella tabs. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, is that a spoiler edition? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, we talked about how the city, like, how did everything come about? Because she kills Micah and then the world comes to the end. And then. Well, so, like, the gates are opened, the which, gates like, open, and oh. then they're like, everybody get in the bunker. She didn't make it to the bunker. No. And then so she had to go and save everybody. And they couldn't yeah. get to her because they were somewhere else. Because they were it. at this convention, basically, yeah. is what I like to call it. it. They were convention. at a world convention where they basically decide how they're going to run the world and what they're going to do. And no one was there to help them. Yeah. They were on their own. No one. So and Hunt dies at one point, or he tries to save her, and he dies. And he comes back. I was like, oh, God. Yep. Yep. I was like, he can't die. There's no, no way. there's no way he was dying. There is no way he can die. Yeah. So, no, he definitely jumped from the plane to save her. Because <laughs> the, what was it? The Imperial Command, like, system. And who are they? The Astrian Guards? That's who they were. So they're like the the people above the Archangels. Are these they the came ones in the with those launchers and like we're gonna decimate yeah. the whole entire gate area. Yeah, which is crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I gave it a four. You still give it a five? I still, I think I would only because of how I think it's just different. It's just different from what I read from her. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to discredit it, but I don't know, maybe a four. The writing was still really good, though. 
I don't know about all that. It was okay. Opinion. Maybe if there had been more booty time, I would have liked it more and or more. I mean, I'm hoping that because of the epilogue where we're seeing Jessica and whatever a Argus, whatever the devil Adis. is, Adis, <laughs> um, that we're gonna see more characters in the next book. I feel like it wouldn't be her style of writing if we didn't see any more yeah. of the characters. I would actually be really disappointed if I didn't see it from someone else's mm-hmm. point of view. So I'd be interested to reread this again because now that I understand the flow of the book, I feel like I'd pick up on the other parts that we missed, but mm-hmm. I don't know. All right. I got nothing else to say. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> All right. This was really good, you guys. You should yeah. still read it. They're going to read it. You really think they're not going to read it? I would read it. This they're cover gonna... is bomb, though. Can we just talk about how you peeled off half the cover and thought that it wasn't important? It's not the cover. You were it's... like, Ashley, this is annoying me. I just peeled it off. It's just, it's it's a cover of the cover. A co- <laughs> this is the cover. I'm, I'm assuming this is Bryce. Yeah. Because her hair is red. I don't know how I feel about that cover. It's a little busy, if you ask me. It is, but there's, like, the key because she, the lock, because she holds the horn and blah, blah, blah. I was really kind of sick about how everybody was like, ooh, her ass is hot. I, like, I okay. She must be some hot human faith thing because, well, yeah, I mean. Everyone was wanting her, males and females. <laughs> I was like, okay. Look at her tight skirts. Oh my god. She wears and she skirts. always wear a dress and heels. The really high heels. Oh <laughs> tight skirts. And look at her booty in that skirt. I don't know. Maybe I will give it a four. Four and a half. That's I don't a know. huge star drop. It's a whole it star is. drop. I don't know if I can do it though. I have to think about it more. All right. Well, thank you for the spoiler free and spoiler edition of Crescent City. It comes out March 3rd. I know everyone's gonna read it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the yeah. fact that it was so thick and I was able to read it so quickly. Yeah, I enjoyed that too. So. All right. Um, thank you for joining us. And hopefully we'll have another book to unspoil and spoil for you in March. No, February. And we'll catch you in the next podcast. Bye, guys. Okay. <laughs>